Hi everyone, Kevin here back with video number three and topic 8A. We're talking about reduction in oxidation. Let's get going. We are working our way through the second item on this list. What are reduction potentials? Let's talk more about those. So we talked about an example of sodium and chlorine and their relative reduction potentials. Let's look at another example. So here, here's copper. Copper 2 plus, the copper ion. This is its potential to be reduced to solid copper metal. So copper 2 plus would be, could be dissolved in Solu an aqueous solution dissolved in water. That's what the AQ means, aqueous for water. If it picks up two electrons, it becomes solid copper metal. Its potential to do so is 0.34. So it's a measure of the tendency to get reduced. Bigger number is higher tendency. And you'd have to see the entire scale to see what this is what the 0.34 means relative to other molecules or atoms. So take this, uh, it's positive. Let's look at another one, put it in context. Zinc, if zinc is gonna pick up two electrons to make zinc solid metal, it actually has a negative reduction potential relative to copper. All right, so copper has a bigger reduction potential. In this case, zinc could pick up two electrons to become solid zinc, but it's probably not going to do so if it's in the presence of copper because copper has a bigger reduction potential. Copper is going to hog the electrons. In fact, copper can pull electrons from solid zinc metal, resulting in a zinc ion that's dissolved in water. So it would look like I'll show you that in a sec. But just first, tendency to be reduced or not, it's a property of the atom of the molecule. We said that in video one. So it's just a property of the atom or the molecule. It's due to the, to the atomic or molecular structure. We looked at the examples of sodium and chlorine in the last video, and they are um, atomic orbitals. And whether they're filled or whether they're almost empty, that kind of thing. So think, think back to that and go back and look at that if you haven't looked at it in a while. So in our case, sodium wants to be oxidized. It wants to give up an electron. Chlorine wants to be reduced in, this, in, that, in that example. Okay, so back to copper and zinc. So those are the two half reactions and their relative reduction potentials. So what we can do is we actually write the zinc reaction in the opposite direction. So what would happen if you put aqueous copper together with solid zinc metal in water, electrons are gonna flow from the zinc to the copper ion. Copper is gonna pick up two electron, electrons, zinc is gonna give up two electrons. So the, in both of these cases, both of these reactions, the equilibrium lies to the right, and that's why we write them this way. All right, so we took this zinc, uh, uh, zinc reaction at the top here, and we wrote it backwards. Because with its low reduction potential, when you expose it to copper, electrons are actually gonna flow from solid zinc over to copper. So copper is gonna pick up two electrons, and it's gonna get them from the solid zinc metal, giving them up. So if you sum these reactions, we now have on the left side of the arrows, two plus copper, copper ion dissolved in water, plus solid zinc also sitting in that water. And that is gonna go to solid copper sitting in the water and a zinc ion dissolved in the water. The two electrons on each side of the arrows are going to cancel one another, so they're not written in the overall reaction. They cancel because they're on each side of the arrow. But the overall reaction is going to look like this one at the bottom. And its overall, its overall potential to happen is plus 1.1 volts. 
And that is, and these are in volts here, and it says that up here at the top. The E with the superscript zero is its reduction potential, and the volts are the units. You can sum the two reactions to get the, the, electron, the reduction potential of the overall reaction. All right, so it's positive. Now, we've written the zinc reaction in the opposite direction, so it has a positive reduction potential. So there's a positive potential to go from left to right in the zinc reaction. There's a positive, positive potential to go from left to right in the copper reaction, too, but that was the way it was at the beginning up here at the top. Copper, I mean zinc, we had to write in the opposite direction. All right, so we can do that. We sum them, these, these reactions, and copper and zinc together like this create a battery. And it looks like that. So if we had solid zinc here in a solution, and we had solid copper in a solution, in that solution of solid copper is also the copper ion. It's dissolved in sulfate here. So there's a sulfate ion to offset negative ion to offset the positively charged zinc ion or copper ion. There's a salt bridge here where the ions can move back and forth to equalize each solution because we're going to we're going to increase the number of zinc ions in the solution on the left and decrease the number of copper ions in the solution on the right when we connect by a wire up here at the top these two pieces of metal. All right, if, we, if they flowed through a voltmeter, we'd see a voltage of 1.1 volts. So that's basically a battery. We created a battery and, ele and, and electrons are going to flow. Current is going to flow. We'll create more zinc ions on the left. That means some sulfate will actually flow toward the zinc side. So I'm gonna change my arrow there and erase the head of the arrow. Whoops, erase the whole arrow. So let's draw an arrow in the direction of the flow of the sulfate. So sulfate will flow in this direction from right to left to offset the increased zinc ions on the left. The copper ions are going to be reduced. The number of them will be reduced. Actually, the little they will literally be reduced by picking up electrons on the right, so less sulfate is needed on the right to balance the copper ions. All right, so the reactions are shown here at the bottom. We've got zinc solid going to aqueous zinc ion on the left and copper aqueous picking up electrons to go to co solid copper on the right. And our net reaction then is shown down here at the bottom. And so this is a, an example of how different reduction potentials will cause current to flow or electrons to flow. Pretty cool stuff, huh? Copper has a certain potential to be reduced. It's higher than zinc. Put them together, copper's gonna pull electrons from zinc. All right, so there's our tendency for a species. There's the re definition of reduction potential. Let's think about biological systems. Now, reduction potentials are a little like electronegativity, right? You might recognize that. The tendency for a species to pick up an electron is a lot like electronegativity, right? The tendency for a species to pull an electron toward it. Given that similarity, which atom in biological systems might have the highest reduction potential? And if you guessed oxygen, you would be absolutely right. So here's a reduction potential for oxygen. It's 0.82, it's positive, and we'll show a scale in a sec that'll show this relative to other reduction potentials, and you'll see it's about the highest reduction potential. We'll see a way nature creates a reduction potential a little higher when it comes to photosynthesis, but for now, oxygen is our highest reduction potential. That's it for video number three. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.